Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. It's fall here, it's almost Thanksgiving, and I know I should have had all my Christmas sewing done, but it's not all done yet. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make a really fast and fun project. So if you're like me and you put off your Christmas sewing, there's still time. This is a Christmas napkin, and you can make four of them in just a couple of hours. So let's get some fabrics and let's get started. Now the napkins I already made, I used a very elegant group of Christmas fabrics. They had metallic accents, and those look really nice for the adult table. But if you want to make something for the kid table, you want something that's just a little bit more fun. Now we're going to need two contrasting prints for the body of the napkin. And I've had my eye on these cute Santas. So for the other color, there's this nice bright red, that'll be cute. Then we just need a little bit of something for the trunk. And we can use this nice black plaid for the trunk. So that's all we need. All we need is one half yard of each of these prints. And we're gonna just use a two and a half inch strip of this. So if you have an extra jelly roll strip in a color that will work, that would be great. I'm just going to go ahead and cut this without straightening up the plaid because I think that will make the tree trunks look a little more interesting if the lines are not perfectly straight. I always like to steam press the fabric nice and flat before I do any cutting. And then I'm going to take just one of the fabrics and I'm going to fold it right wrong side out because I need to draw on one side and this has a nice light color that will make it easy for me to see my lines. I've got both the fabrics stacked here and I basically want to get two half circles. So the easiest way for me to do that is to cut it in half first. So the fabric is about, got about 20 inches there. We're gonna cut it right here. Now working with just one half at a time, let's mark the middle. So I can fold it in half and make a little crease there. So I can still see that little line there. Let's put that on this line here. And I'm gonna use a pencil and my plastic ruler and I'm going to draw a circle. I'm going to draw an eight and a half inch circle. So I'm going to measure over eight and a half inches here and I'm just going to keep the point on this line here and swivel this and keep doing some little dots until I get all the way around the semicircle. So I'm just coming all the way around here. I know I said I'm making a circle. It's actually a semicircle with an eight and a half inch radius here. And I'm just gonna go all the way till I get to the other edge. And then you can connect the dots if you like, or you can do like I am. I just take the scissors and there's enough for me to cut. Just make a nice smooth cut and you can just cut from dot to dot. Just keep cutting till you get all the way to the far edge. Now to cut your other pieces, you don't have to draw again. You can just take one of these semicircles. I like to flip it over so I can see it easier. And you can use this as your template and just cut right around the outside. So there's the body, so to speak, of the trees here. Now for the stems, this is the two and a half inch strip and I'm going to cut it into two inch pieces. So they're gonna be two and a half by two. Now let's take the stems right over to the sewing machine. Take two of your stem pieces and put them right sides together. And it's a short stem, so we're gonna sew around these three sides. I'm going to use red thread because I want to have my thread contrast and red seems to look the best with all the fabrics I'm using. So I'm just making a quarter inch seam, pivoting at the corners, and be sure to back tack at the beginning and the end. And 
Now we can trim this and flip it right side out. So I'm going to trim off the corners close to the stitching, but don't clip your stitching. Now you can just put one finger inside there. I found if you put your fingernail right in the corner, you can get that corner poked out pretty good. Now some people will use a chopstick or there's something called a purple thing, purple thing that points, makes these points nice and neat. But pretty much if you use your fingernail and squash it down, you can get this nice and flat. So I'm just going to finger press around the edges so that I can get this laying flat. And now I'm going to top stitch very close to the edge. And again, I'm using red thread because that will coordinate with the body of the trees. So go ahead and do that with all of your stems. Now we're going to take one of the stems, here's the open edge, and we are going to pin this onto one of our half circles here. So I'm going to want to pin it two inches from the straight. So I'm going to take that open edge, put it right on the edge here, and go ahead and pin it in place. Now take the other fabric and put it right sides together. So we're putting them facing each other here. They're exactly the same size already. And just put a couple of pins around the edges to hold it in place. We're going back to the sewing machine. Now we're going to stitch all around the edges, but we're gonna leave an opening right here so we can flip it right side out. So I'm gonna use about a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm gonna back tack and just pivot when you get to the corner. And make sure your stem, which is right here, is sticking out far enough so you catch it all the way along the edge. And I might even back tack a little here because the stem might get pulled on, especially if you have a bunch of kids eating at your house, they might wave that around by the stem. So it's kind of a spot that you want to double, double stitch there. So for the opening, you don't want to leave it too big, but you want to be able to get your hand in there. So it's about six or seven inches. Go ahead and back tack. And then we're going to flip this right side out also. So I'm going to trim off both of these corners. And we're going to go ahead and flip it right side out. So just put one hand in. And again, you want to poke out those corners. And if your fingernail works good enough, you can just squash it down like that. Otherwise, you can stick something in there to make it poke out a little better. And let's take this over to the ironing board now. So I've got one hand inside here, and I'm just going to push around the edges and then come back and finger press a little bit after I've pushed out there. And that it's pretty easy because it's round. So I'm just going to keep ironing all the way around with my hands first. And let's unpin that stem there. So now we can flatten it out and we can iron this curved part first. Now to do this straight edge, flatten it out a little bit and you can turn this in a quarter inch and just take your fingernail right along the edge. Same thing here, you don't have to do the whole opening so I finger press that a little bit. Now I'm going to pull it like this and straighten everything out. And then I'm going to iron this straight edge. Now take your ruler and measure over five inches from the end of the napkin that does not have the stem. So from this end here, I'm measuring over five inches and I'm going to fold it right there. I'm folding it so that these edges meet up and I'm going to iron it. Now we're going to go right back to the machine. All we have to do now is edge stitch. We're going to go all the way around the napkin and then we're going to stitch down that line that we ironed in. So I'm going to start sewing about a half inch above that line. So edge stitching, you don't have to back tack because we're going to ride over our sewing line when we get back there. You're just going to start and go a little less than an eighth of an inch from the edge. 
this is going to make everything lay nice and flat and it's also going to stitch up the opening. So when you get to right here, drive right over your other stitching. That will anchor it in place. And then pivot right here and stitch down that ironed line. You do want to back tack at this end. And now we're going to take it back to the ironing board. Steam press all around the edges so the napkin lays nice and flat. And now fold it again. This is right where we had it folded. It's right on that stitching line. And iron that one more time. Now we're going to fan fold it. So the first fold, we're going to want to try to get this in about thirds. So I'm going to have to kind of guess it first. But I'm going to want to line this up with that fold and this fold up with that edge there. Once you've got it lined up the way you want there so they're even, then press it. Now I'm going to flip the whole thing over and I'm going to fold this over so that this fold here is lined up with that bottom fold there and then fan that one back. And now you can flip the whole thing over if you like. Make sure it's nice and lined up here and nice and lined up there. One more pressing. And it's all the way done. They're all done now. This is such a fast, fun project. So here's what it looks like when it's all opened up. It's very plain looking. But because we've got that stitching line there, even after you wash these, you're going to be able to figure out where to fold it very easily. Now, this one has green on the bottom, and this one has red, and the only difference is the way we put the first fold. So this one, we folded it green to green, and this one, that stitching line, it's right here, we folded red to red. So you have kind of two different looks, and these are really Cheerful, nice and bright with the red there. These are a little more elegant and understated. I don't really know which one I like better, but leave a comment. Let me know which trees you like the best. Thanks for watching our tutorial today on how to make the Christmas tree napkins. We hope you enjoyed it. Now, we're going to have another giveaway. We're going to give away a Christmas quilt. This is a rail fence. These are all Moda fabrics. And take a look at the back. Those nice, beautiful, big flowers there. This would make a nice throw size blanket to put on the back of your couch for Christmas. It's very easy to enter the giveaways. Just click the link below that says giveaway and put in your email address and your name and we can mail this anywhere in the world. Good luck. Now if you like our tutorials and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would really help us out. Happy quilting!